Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another one of my Mythic Mobs tutorials. I lost my lab again, but today we're not going to worry about it because um, it occurred to me that many of you follow my channel and you want to learn to do the things that I'm teaching you and you want to learn to do the stuff that I and uh, other Mythic Mob makers do ourselves. But many people I've come to find don't know how to write in YAML format and... Well, that's what I am going to be teaching you in this video. It's actually super easy, so make sure to follow along. Uh, I'm not going to do a thing where I talk about it and, you know, expect you to do it, like, afterwards. I'm going to demonstrate it to you guys. So, you know, no boring videos that way, hopefully, anyway. So make sure to just go ahead and follow along, and we're going to uh, we're gonna roll on into it. So the first thing you're going to need is a YML file. Now, I'm going to let you know computers or like excuse me windows 10 by default cannot start off with yml files so if you're like me and you're running a local server um i use notepad plus plus the uh the editing program i'll have a link to that in the description for you guys it's super super duper easy and convenient and it actually looks very nice so um yeah, I recommend starting with getting Notepad++ before advancing any further into this video. Once you have that, we're going to need to set up our files. Now, how are we going to do this? I will show you. So first, you're going to need to find your Mythic Mobs folder. It's going to be inside your Plugins folder. We're going to go ahead and just go into the mobs for now. As you can see, I have quite a lot of mobs going on right now, but we're going to make a new file. It's going to be a text document. Here, I'm going to type it in, YAML mob. So as you can see here, it still says .txt. To fix that, you're going to go over to the end of .txt, delete it, and then type in YML. Whenever you press enter, you're going to get a warning message saying if you change a file extension, it might become unusable. You don't have to worry about this because we're running it in Minecraft, and Minecraft runs on YML, so it will still be usable. Do not worry about this. All you're going to do is press yes. Perfect. So now we're going to go into our mob file. Now to start off, we need to have our mob name. So I'm going to go ahead and type this here. Mob name goes here. And... I'm going to put a comment in front of it. To make it a comment and to disable it, you're going to throw a hashtag in front of it, like that. As you can see, when you're in Notepad++, it will turn green, meaning it is not enabled. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and make a mob name. Here, we're going to go ahead and make our mob, and we're just going to call him Bruiser, because, I don't know, I have melee stuff on my mind. So once you make your mob name, you're going to want to add a colon to it. When you do, you will see your text turn blue, and that's how you know that it is reading it as the first line, and that it is working properly. Next is where you're going to add all your mob options. I'm only going to add a few, however, if you want to see more options that are available to you, make sure to go on and check my Getting Started tutorial series. I go over a lot in there, and there's a lot more options and stuff you can learn from there than you will in this tutorial. So next, we're going to need type, or, or sorry, our mob type. So in order, or one thing I want to explain to you is whenever you're making a file in YML, in order to make everything fall under our mob, you need to add spaces in front of it. So we're going to throw in two spaces. You'll know this worked because you will see a red box appear with this minus sign in it. When we click on that, It'll turn into a plus sign and everything will be hidden. To show this further, we're going to go ahead and type in more stuff. Now one thing I want you to remember, we put two spaces here. So space space, let me get rid of those two. Then we're going to put type. Make sure this is capitalized. Every new line needs to start off capitalized if it's going to have subsections. Next we're going to go ahead and type in zombie. Okay. So now we have our typical mob. Make sure to go ahead and save it from here. After that, we're going to add a display. After you make your first line that's double spaced, pressing enter, if typed correctly, will keep your double spacing in front of it automatically. 
it's very convenient for when you're typing on, like, um, when you're, like, in the flow of things and you're typing stuff out and you want to just keep it going, it will automatically throw in the extra spaces for you, so long as you're not on line one. If I were to type in, like, bruiser friend, I guess. As you can see, when I press enter, it goes back to line one. As well, when I hide bruiser, you can see that bruiser friend is being uh, treated as its own entity or its own subject. Anything that's double spaced will fall under bruiser and anything double spaced after this will fall under bruiser friend. But let's go ahead and get rid of this for now. So we're gonna press enter here and we're gonna add our display name and a couple other options. Okay, so now that we added some basic mob op or mob setup, we're gonna add a new thing called options. This is where things are gonna change a little bit. So with everything above, we're gonna type in options. We're gonna press enter, and you'll see that we are two spaces from the beginning or the left side of the page. But for YAML format, all of our options are gonna be defined under options. I know that sounds redundant, but you'll understand as we type it out. So, in order to get this to work correctly, we're gonna have to space two more times. So as you can see, options gets its own red box now. So when we minimize it, everything within that will disappear. But if we minimize this, everything else will disappear. That's how you know it's working correctly. So here we're gonna type in prevent sunburn colon space true. A good way to know if this is working is this text will turn a brighter shade of blue after being put after um, an option that you type out here. Now, um, it will not work if you don't have that colon there. As you can see, it all just turns into normal text. You need to have the colon to define the string. So we're going to throw that back in there. And for options, uh, it'll change plugin to plugin, but for mythic mobs, you need to have a space between your option and your value, which would be true or false or a number value, depending on the option. So this space always needs to be here. To prove my point, we're going to go ahead and do a different thing. Movement speed. Again, add the colon and you'll see it turn a dark blue. And we're going to type in 0 0.01. As you can see, tr numbers are treated differently. They get turned orange, whereas uh, true false values get turned blue. As long as there is a color there and a space between your option and your input, it, you will know that it is working correctly. And to prove it, we're gonna go ahead and save, reload, and we're gonna spawn in our mob. And spawn bruiser. Okay. So you can see he's got his display name above his head that we defined here. Um, another thing you want to do, make sure you have these quotation marks around it. You can use single quotes or double quotes. It doesn't matter, but it does have to be the same one on both sides. So if you have double here, you need to have double over here as well. If you have single over here, you need to have single over here as well. Okay, so how do we know that the movement speed is working? We're gonna go into survival if you aren't already. And you can see he's targeting us. He's putting his hands in the air as if he's chasing us, but he's not moving. He's not moving in the least bit. So that's how we know that our movement speed worked and that prevent sunburn worked because he is not currently on fire. By default, zombies will burn in the sunlight. As we can see here. Don't want him to touch me, because I definitely don't want to catch fire. I'm going to turn on god mode and let him burn. Eventually. There we go. Okay. You see that zombie? That was just a generic Minecraft zombie, whereas this is our custom one who is not burning in the sunlight. So next, and last, we're going to talk about a couple other things. So... There's a few other things that go into it, like this, for example. Another one is going to be modules. Anytime you have something like this as your uh, pre preface, you're always going to add two more spaces afterwards. So for me, I'm going to do threat table true. Okay, 
So since a threat table is a type of module, it needs to have two spaces after modules. Since movement speed and prevent sunburn are two different types of options, they need to have two spaces after options. Last is the skills. Like all of our things above, skills is going to be only two spaces from the side of the page. If we minimize these, you can see what it looks like all together. As you can see, they all have two spaces in front of them. But if we minimize this, everything falls under our mob that we defined here. So for skills, it's going to be a little bit different. The only thing that's going to change is we are going to add a dash or a hyphen and then space, or sorry, space. So we have our space here, our two spaces here, and our hyphen here where our normal text would start. After you have the double space hyphen space, then you can go ahead and type out a, um, a mechanic. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have fun with this one. So we're gonna type out velocity, x equals zero, y equals 0 0.5, z equals zero. So one thing I wanna go ahead and emphasize now is in order for a mechanic to have input, you need to add the curly brackets because that is how it is read in YAML format. You cannot use the square brackets, and you cannot use the parentheses. You specifically need the curly brackets. So after that, uh, each mechanic is going to have a different set of input values. For velocity, you just have your x, y, and z values for moving. I'm going to back away because that's kind of annoying. Okay, so you're going to have your x, y, and z values for uh, velocity. And like I said, every mechanic has its own values, so make sure to read the manual and check and see what they are. For example, damage would not have X, Y, and Z because it is not a movement-based ability. So instead, it'll have options like amount or prevent knockback. It all depends on what you're trying to do, but it's all going to work the same. You type your skill, and then you're gonna have curly brackets. Before adding your input strings, it's highly recommended that you just add your curly brackets first. When you see them turn red like this, that is how you know they are connected to one another and that everything that you type in between will work if typed correctly. So, one more thing, and finally, what I wanna go ahead and do is show you. Notice how each of these have a semicolon in between. There are going to be some mechanics that do things slightly different, However, for the most part, every time you add a new option to your mechanic, such as y equals 0 0.5, you're going to add a, semi a semicolon in between each option. This is going to space them apart and the file will be able to read them as their own individual things. If you do not add this, it will not work. This will not work and commas will not work. You need to have the semicolon. Now again, I will say there are some mechanics that are different. I don't currently have any in mind, uh, but there are some that do use commas for multiple strings and then a semicolon afterwards. You just have to check the manual and see how the mechanic is set up, but for the most part, this will be your general layout. After that, you're gonna type in a space, and then you're gonna do at some at, at your targeter. I'm going to do at self so it targets itself. But you always need to do this in this order. So mechanic, space, targeter, space, trigger. I'm going to go ahead and do on interact. If I can type correctly. On interact. So we're going to go ahead and save. And we're going to reload. Yeah, wow. MM reload. Okay. So now if we walk up to our mob and right click him, which is what on interact means, he should fly up in the air. Or hop. Huh, I guess I guess the velocity wasn't as high as I thought it'd be. But as you can see, everything is working now the way we defined it. So pretty much that's uh that's how you are going to type in YAML format. And the same goes for skills. 
before I end the video, I'm actually going to go ahead and go on into that. So we're going to type in a new skill here. So uh, everything that we did here, we're going to do here as well. So skill S equals bunny hop at self on interact. Next, we're just going to go ahead and copy this and delete it. Now we're going to need to make a new skill file. Again, to reiterate, you're going to go into your Mythic Mobs folder, go to Skills, and you're going to make a new text document. Here we're going to go ahead and call it YAML Mob Skills. Dot YML. You'll get the warning. Just go ahead and press yes, and it'll change the file type. Okay, so now we have our skill here. So what we're going to do, just like our mob, you need to start off um, at the very edge of the page and type out your skill name. Add the colon, press enter, and then double space for everything afterwards. So skills. And now we can go ahead and paste in our command string that we added before at self on in, uh, or velocity. Now, since it's in a skill file now and it's targeting itself on interact, you can delete that from the skill file. Once you have that going, you can go ahead and save and reload. I just want to emphasize again here, notice how skills in the velocity skill line both have two spaces after it for, uh, for the bunny hop skill. That's how it's going to be. And as you can tell, it's very similar to, like, to this. Type, display, health, damage all fall under bruiser. Skills and velocity and anything else you add will fall under bunny hop. Until, of course, you make a, uh, a new line. Reptile hop, I guess. I don't know. So if we minimize this, you can see reptile hop does not get minimized with it because it is now its own skill. So we're going to go ahead and save. Uh, reload. We're going to spawn him in again. Oh, uh, boy, I don't remember. Oh, I called him bruiser. That's right. Okay. And as you can see, still working exactly like he was before we we changed him up. So that's uh, that's how you write in YAML format. Let me go and kill him off here. All right. I hope this tutorial helped you guys a lot. If uh, if you have any questions, make sure to hop on over to my Discord channel. Link will be in the description below. Uh, you know, make sure to join it, check it out. There's always community discussion going on there. A lot of stuff that you can learn. There's a lot of public questions, public answers. Uh, there's just so much going on. So make sure to go ahead and check on, uh, go over and check that out. Make sure to just uh, subscribe for more future content and tutorials that'll be coming out. I do not plan to stop anytime soon. And Mythic Mobs is like updating way faster than I can even make tutorials for. So you know, I will be at this for quite a while. So make sure to just uh, subscribe for more future content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.